Let's talk about a hit piece of news that just came out a short time ago from NBC News. Now, let me put some context here. Do you guys know NBC News? You probably don't know NBC News because you probably don't watch them. No one does. Uh, NBC News uh, is the network, is the news network that hired a Brian Williams, disgraced news anchor who lied about being in war zones and whom they didn't then fire. They just transferred over to their other crappy news network, MSNBC, right? So that's what they do with news anchors who lie about being in active war zones, right? They give them primetime television shows. Uh, this is also the same NBC News, of course, or MSNBC News, that for a year or more pushed a phony Russiagate story. Um, Steel dossier every night on the Rachel Maddow show. So this is your NBC News. So they're out today with a hit piece on independent journalists who are actually doing real journalism in real war zones covering stories that they won't cover. Just, I just wanted to provide some context. Oh, I forgot one other little piece of context. NBC News, also the host of the Today Show, building a room for Matt Lauer with a secret button and door that he could lock people in uh, in his own office. So th this is your NBC News that is the bastion of journalism. So they're out with this hit piece this afternoon. And here's the headline, Russia propaganda efforts aided by pro-Kremlin content creators research finds. Um, and this is written by a dubious reporter, Brandy Zadrozny, um, who really has no, I mean, no history of actual journalism, does like fashion pieces from what we can gather and writes about like Beverly Hills high-end toilets. So this is like seems like the strategy now from from news organizations. We saw this at the Washington Post, where you get that Taylor Lorenz to go door to door and knock on TikTok uh, creators doors um, and who doesn't actually do journalism for these newspapers. Anyway, so this piece is a total smear job about independent journalists in covering Ukraine who are in the Donbass region or other areas covering um, actual journalism. Well, what it is is a summation of a report done by a quote unquote research firm in the UK. And it points out how social media has tried really hard to scrub any pro-Russian content. And they've done things that are from obvious Russian state sources, right? But they kind of can't sweep up all of these independent creators who are saying things that are at all pro-Russia. So uh, it names people we've talked about on this show, Gonzalo Lira, Patrick Lancaster, and Ava Bartlett, and says, wow, I mean, basically, the crux of the article is, gosh, it's too bad that those people can't get swept up in this scrub of media because they are pro-Russian. It does not actually support that. It doesn't seem like the journalist looked into it for herself because she does say they are independent sources. It doesn't really say what they say that is so uh, controversial, although there are a few things that she just sort of flat gets wrong. Um, and it's interesting that she uses this report as an authoritative source when the think tank out of the UK, uh, what is the name? It's Clayton? ISD. It's, it uh, stands yeah. for, um, can you find it? Uh, yes. This think tank is actually sponsored, Institute for Strategic Dialogue. It's called a London-based think tank, but she fails to point out that they are state-funded by the U.S. government, by NATO, by Western European organizations. Um, there are all manner of Western countries, specifically state departments, that sponsor this research. So we should automatically think, huh, state departments telling us that these independent people who are actually on the ground there are telling us something that is not the truth. So we maybe should think that instead we trust a think tank out of London that's not there, that is state run. So that doesn't imagine. track. No, it doesn't track. So, you know, one of the people that she that she writes about and, and, and really takes to task in this piece is is award winning journalist uh, Eva Bartlett, who's been covering this conflict when when a lot of other people aren't. Right. She's actually there physically there covering this conflict, seeing it with her own eyes. So earlier this afternoon, I caught up with Eva Bartlett, friend of the show, and I sat down with her and asked her about this hit piece. And uh, she had this to say. Take a listen. So we caught up with Eva, who literally just arrived on her way to an active war zone 
to deal with this BS news article that just came out from NBC News attacking independent journalists. So, uh, Eva, thanks for jumping on at the last moment here to to talk about this. I think you're on like four hours of sleep also as an independent <laughs> as an independent journalist. This is what independent journalists actually do. So thank you so much for jumping on here to deal with this. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me on. I appreciate your concern. So. The other day you had tweeted this, you received, uh, just kind of walk us back in this story here to provide some context here. So on our screen here, I have, this is, uh, this is from NBC News. So NBC News sent you uh, an email from this Brandy Zadrozny. Can you walk us through, I have this here on the screen, what, uh, what NBC News said to you the other day? Yeah, so the, the tone was uh, semi-polite, um, a feigned politeness, as, as they do when they're trying to entrap you into a, an interview in which they would only really cherry pick a soundbite that fits their predetermined narrative. But she gave her name, said she's a reporter for NBC, based in New York, and is reaching out about a new report on, now I, I don't remember the acronym, ISD, on the reach and network of Western influencers uh, spreading pro-Kremlin narratives. Your channels are mentioned as a major vector, whatever that is, for Russian, <laughs> Russian propaganda from this network. Reaching out to comment on your inclusion. My deadline is 2 p.m. EST. Thanks so much. So, you know, I, I'm sorry for the uh, overemphasized uh, <laughs> reading of that email, but I, I have to say this is not the first time I've gotten such an email, and I'll, I'll get into that in, in a little bit. But I mean, um, I, I know, as I alluded to just a second ago, like there was no intent for um, an honest discussion. It's clearly the narrative was already uh, scripted. Um, so and, uh, because I have endured this type of smear since late to 2016, repeatedly, repeatedly, I knew what to expect. And I also know it's, it's pointless in engaging with them. Instead, I mean, some people say, yeah, you should engage. But I feel like they don't deserve to be um, validated with my uh, interest, with my time. Uh, and also, I just feel like, you know what, they, they're, they're, they're so arrogant, uh, they're liars, they're war propagandists, I prefer to mock them. And so I just screenshotted it and put it on Twitter and on my Telegram channel and on Facebook. Um, so wait I a minute, let's be clear, you didn't honor her artificial deadline because you were actually doing journalism? Her artificial yeah. deadline. Yeah, I, I'm, that's so that's so awful of you that you didn't honor yeah. her deadline. <laughs> so she writes in this piece. So who do we first of all, just for some context here, I, I think it's important. So she references we're, we're reaching out because we're going to do this piece based on this information coming from the ISD. So this right. is important. So first of all, she's wrapping a whole news piece around something that's coming out of basically like a think tank. Right. right. Uh, uh, called the ISD and this information. So who is the ISD? Do you have any information about who these people are? And you know what? Um, I actually I had a very sketchy Internet on the way down. So I, I for most of the, the, the route down, I did not have Internet. And then when I saw this, I, I took some screenshots of the article. But um, I know I read it. She did say who the ISD is, but I don't know who they are. Uh, I think you're right. They're a think tank. But beyond that, I'm not familiar Right. So we're getting our information from think tanks. Uh, and so that's what she's basing it on. So some of the yeah. let me just kind of go through some of the article and I want you to sort of sure, sure. react here and kind of take this apart. So she says a small network of pro Kremlin content creators have seen their audiences grow dramatically in recent months while spreading disinformation about the war in Ukraine. That's how she opens right. her piece evading social media platforms efforts to curb <laughs> Russian propaganda and paving a path to Western audiences, according to research published Wednesday. So that's how she starts the piece. What say you? I don't for a moment believe this is her own uh, initiative. I think that she is the, 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 the journalist, in quotes, that has been assigned the task of smearing a number of us based on this sketchy re report from whatever the Institute is. Um, and the, the, basically, you, you saw the tone of her, the opening of her article. Uh, it's already determined that we are propagandists working for the Kremlin, according to that tone. Um, and uh, like I said, this is not the first time I've heard this type of tone. Um, and then it's it's filled with ad, hom ad hominem attacks, you know, uh, against myself and the other people uh, listed in this article. Yeah, she also takes aim not only at you, but Patrick Lancaster, uh, who's been doing excellent reporting as right. well. 
Uh, talk about that because she, she goes after him and she calls out to some of his, she, I'm just going to read from here. She says, since December, Lancaster's YouTube channel has grown from 57,000 subscribers to more than 500,000. Isn't it interesting? Instead of having some awareness that there's a, such a lack of, uh, of, of, of access to information from yes. y- your bosses at NBC, Maybe this is why people have to turn to alternative forms of media, have to go on Telegram, Absolutely. have to actually get access to these because you won't cover it from your Absolutely. cushy New York City apartment or wherever the hell you are. This That absolutely infuriates me uh, to call out the numbers of YouTube subscribers. Give me a break. Right. His videos are often breathless reports with graphic footage of dead bodies, violence for which Lancaster claims Ukraine is responsible. And uh, she then talks about how some of this is staged and Lancaster often appears on Russian state media and then also on Infowars with Alex Jones, et cetera. And uh, and so she takes she she takes the piss out of him and it takes the piss out of a number of uh, of number of independent journalists. She I, and I'm very angry reading this, what she wrote about Patrick. Uh, I don't know Patrick personally, but I know he's done very courageous reporting, putting himself at risk. It's, it's so re- revolting. Their lives don't matter. Just like, you know, earlier uh, at the beginning of the uh, military operation in Ukraine, we heard all the, the Western media's reporting on, on refugees. And they were saying, well, these, these, these refugees are different. They're white and they're Christian, unlike, you know, other refugees like from Syria. They're, they don't, they're not Christian or white. Well, actually, they are. But anyway, it's just this this really disgusting uh, prioritizing of whose lives matter, you know. And so that really uh, pisses me off about what she had to say about Lancaster, aside from the implication that he is staging his videos. She also says in this piece that researchers say the on the ground reports from self-described independent journalists whose reports are often made from Russian occupied territories of Ukraine and amplify Kremlin talking points and downplay or deny reported Russian atrocities. Um, They have proved effective at circumnavigating commitments from European governments and US based social media platforms to stop the spread of Russian propaganda. So it's your so so when these content when these social media companies censor content that we see are able to get access to they provide propaganda that's up to, you need to fall in line with that basically she's arguing that you should be ashamed that you need to fall in line with western propaganda mechanisms and machines because <laughs> you're you're circumnavigating this you're circumnavigating this let's talk about commitments from european governments we've heard of the minsk accords right mm-hmm Weren't European right, governments party to those accords? Now let's talk about those governments committing to those accords and ensuring that Ukraine did not violate them for the past eight years. Did they? Hmm. Did they appear- commit to them? <laughs> did they ensure that? <laughs> no, they didn't. This sold out hack of a journalist is trying to denigrate a whole swath of people who I've never met. You know, all the people that she's listed, uh, I don't believe I've met any of them. But she's trying to imply we're all this like swarm of Kremlin bots uh, circumnavigating this Europe's social media policies, et cetera, et cetera. But what we're doing, um, I can't vouch for every single person, but I, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's the same approach as we're reporting what civilians on the ground in the Donbass are enduring under Ukrainian bombings, which do include Ukraine circumnavigating the Minsk Accords that the European parties that um, that co-signed it also circumnavigated. So it's just, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's 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 putting priorities, you know, just on on tr- on trying to discredit us and overlooking uh, intentionally overlooking the real situation here, which we've covered here on the show extensively. And fa- she she points out in this article, Facebook has labeled Bartlett's posts with a f- Facebook, by the way, whose fact checkers. Uh, come from the intelligence community, right? Uh, fact checkers who come from the military industrial complex that Facebook has hired. So just frame of reference where Facebook is getting their fact checkers. Facebook right. has labeled Bart- <laughs> Bartlett's posts with a disclaimer that she may be partially or wholly under the editorial control of the Russian government. Uh, so, yeah. Do you want to take that? That's my favorite part. Um, yeah, so uh, she does admit in her her blurb on me that what I contribute to Russia are op eds. So, just in case people don't know what an op ed is, that's an opinion article, and opinion right. articles are based on the author's opinion. Ding, ding, ding. Right. <laughs> so these things I've been contributing to RT 
are my opinion. And as I've always maintained, uh, RT never censored me in what I was saying when I was writing from Gaza, from Syria, from the Donbass, from Venezuela. And I, I, you cannot name me a major Canadian or American platform that would afford me the same platform, the same size, the same reach without censorship. It just won't happen. That's the thing. The, the reverse effect of these smears is actually, in my experience, it's brought more people um, to me. Maybe some people are like, who's this crazy person? And then they read some of my stuff and they're like, ah, oh, she's not so crazy. Or other right. people are just disgusted with what is clearly um, a smear attack and, and say, oh, I just found out about you and I'm going to be following you now. So it has, the, in many cases, the reverse effect. And really, the only people that I think will will applaud this kind of piece are people that are already um, brainwashed and there's really no hope for them or people that are part of this propaganda machine. Yeah, well said, well said. And I think people who are looking for information uh, will actually say, wait a second, uh, I'm going to actually start, start, start to seek out some of these independent voices who are right. circumventing the <laughs> U- U.S.-based social media platforms. Imagine that. I would be, I would be trying to find those individuals. Um, and that's what this show is all about. So, Eva, thank you so much for taking time out from actual journalism uh, to talk with us about this uh, ridiculous piece. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you for having me on. And maybe we can have a chat um, in a week or so when I've uh, been able to uh, move around in the Dunbass again. Absolutely. We'd love to have you back. Thank you so much, Eva. And uh, stay safe and get some rest. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I'm always tired when I'm talking to you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Like an actual journalist who is up at three in the morning traveling to a war zone to cover. And then, you know, NBC News is writing a smear piece on her. Yes. Um, It's incredibly personal, too, I'm sure. Um, Tara, do you have thoughts about that? that you know, like it, share? you know, I, 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 as I said earlier about the politicians where I had no feelings, I have a lot of feelings about this, a lot of big ones. Um, I'm incensed because, uh, Ava Bartlett is a brave journalist who for years has gone to different war zones and her work is award winning. They write a hit piece on her just right. before she's going back into a war zone. I mean, that to me, it, it's, it's beyond it's violent in a way it's just it just shows you how um craven and how determined the u.s is to justify all the military spending they've done and they're going to be you know decimate anyone in their way and it doesn't seem to me like this journalist watched any of their programming at all they sort of googled them And whatever their, you know, biased results came up, they said, oh, Gonzalo Lira, he liked to say things about women being sexy. So that's who he is, right? Um, I don't think that they watched it. It it doesn't seem to me that that was contextualized at all in the piece. I think this Brandy person uh, is trying to go for Nina's job, you know, the Department of the Ministry. Nina Jankowitz. Right, right, right. Yeah, Yeah, like I think they're auditioning for who's going to run the Ministry of Truth in America, right? (laughs) <laughs> um, I'm saying very sarcastically, but it's really, it's disgusting to see the direction that we're going. It's just, um, because, you know, and NBC is very problematic, as you know, um, Rich McHugh, who's a really amazing investigative journalist who worked with Ronan Farrow, um, did a big expose on NBC and how they catch and kill stories about, um, sexual assault or, or sexual misconduct. And, um, it, it made quite an impact. Um, and you know, the, and here they are writing a, about Gonzalo Lira in such a in such a way and writing a hit piece. Of course, they did a hit piece on me as well. Um, I think they wrote that I had committed perjury and that I didn't have a law degree. Well, I do have a law degree from Seattle University School of Law, so thank you. But you know, I just they're they're terrible. They they just they what they can't um, you fabricate. You know, they'll they'll just kind of take the facts and then twist them and smear them and and. Um, You know, and journalists, um, you know, they don't want the story to be about them. They're trying to cover an event. They're trying to cover that. But by, but by, you know, mainstream media has taken this new thing where they just attack the journalists, do hit pieces. I think recently Brian McDonald, who's an international Irish journalist, he was sanctioned just because he works at RT, you know, and and it's just not fair, you know, Hmm. to see, to see go on. We should put out, point out, because I don't want to see this in the chat later, that I was an NBC contributor, um, for several years so i don't want to be called out for hypocrisy i worked for nbc my one of my first anchor jobs in west virginia 
yes. e edit was an NBC affiliate. So I guess do we have to put these disclaimers? That I we think that's for fair. Um, I was not that kind of reporter. I was a technology reporter. So uh, there was less opportunity for me to be wicked. Um, but yeah. I will say this um, on the topic of you being confused with the actress, Tara Reid. I was often, uh, often confused with Natalie Morales when I was there. Uh, and I am Natalie Morris. And um, many people were disappointed when they got her, me instead of her. <laughs> you know what well. else I find to be very hypocritical is the fact that, you know, like Chris Hedges, uh, Ed Schultz, all these other journalists are able to speak their mind on RT, but they're censored in the United States. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think Eva pointed out, she's like, what other U.S. based company of a large scale with this large would actually let me go and do my job and not censor me and not tell me what to say, yeah. and not tell me what to cover. I'm going to go to Syria. I'm going to go to Venezuela. I'm going to go to these other locations. What other company would do that? I, I and then shame her if she didn't. You're right. Right. You're right. I mean, I did op-eds for almost a year for RT and got a lot of criticism for it. And I said, why are you criticizing me? They, they're awesome. I mean, it, it, it's the same. I had the same experience. You ask Lee Camp, whom I know, um, his podcast was pulled down from the same day mine was um, from Google and from Spotify. He said the same thing in the eight years he had a show at RT America, but he never once was told what to say or what not to say. And neither was I. Like, I, I suggested the subjects. I would do that if, you know, and, and, you know, it was a really great experience and you don't get that experience with us media or European media at all. Not at all. I think it, it, shutting out any media is really dangerous these days. And even we do a daily newsletter and a lot of times mm -hmm. Clayton will send me stories that he wants me to look at. And I'm like, I'm not clicking that that's this site or that site, you know, because I had my biases set. And the more I've gotten into this work, the more I've realized that if you shut out even media that you have a pre-existing bias, you're guilty of the bias too, right? And even say people who don't like Fox News, but I think Fox News sort of differentiation of news versus opinion is valid. Um, and you miss a lot if you've just already decided what media outlets are about. And that's something I've had to learn the hard way. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.